Welcome to my review of the Case Canoe Knife. The footage you're watching right now is from a 35 minutes long silent documentary film that shows the everyday life of a family of Canadian Algonquians. The film documents activities such as hunting, fishing, drying meat and fish, picking berries, manufacturing of baskets, buckets and moccasins. A large portion of the film shows the construction of a canoe with birch bark. Many Native American tribes made finely crafted birch bark canoes. This type of canoe is a frame of wooden ribs covered with the lightweight bark of birch trees. Birch bark was the perfect choice to build canoes because not only was it lightweight and smooth, but it was also waterproof and resilient. These boats have remained virtually unchanged in design for hundreds of years and they prove to be ideal for traveling the numerous streams, rivers and lakes of North America. Of course, the canoe pocket knife pattern hasn't anything to do with canoeing itself. But Case Cutlery commemorates the cultural heritage with this blade etching of an Indian in a canoe. The canoe knife pattern is an equal end style frame with distinctive bolsters at both ends. The name comes from the fact that both bolsters curve up to give the handle the outline of a canoe. There are modern interpretations of this knife pattern, for example the Spiderco diet and micro diet, or this one here, the bird wing slip it. Watching the evolution and revival of shapes and styles is one of the most fascinating aspects of knife collecting. What I like most about the canoe knife pattern is its elegance. Look how the extended bolsters cover the sharp corners at the back of the blade tang. Here and here. Just for comparison, this is a large stockman knife and as you can clearly see the back ends of the blades stick out. Not much, but they stick out. Now look at the canoe again. The back of the tang is nicely covered by the bolster. The bolsters and the spine of the main blade build a fluid continuous line. Very elegant. And because I like this knife pattern so much, I bought a second case canoe. This one is from the popular XX limited edition series. The standard version of a canoe knife comes with a large spear blade at one end and a small pen blade on the other. For those of you new to knives, a pen blade is also a spear blade, but only smaller. Pen blades are perfect for fine work. The original and primary purpose, however, was to sharpen quill pens, hence the name of the blade. In my opinion, this combination of blades is ideal for utility work as they will accomplish just about any cutting task. To give you a size comparison, the master spear blade of the case canoe has almost the same length 
as the spear point blade on the Victorinox Cadet or on the Victorinox Climber. But the spear blade on the canoe is significantly wider. As for the overall size of the case canoe, the closed length is 3 and 5 eighths of an inch. Apart from the different colors, these two case canoe knives come with different blade steels. First, let's take a look at the case model number of the knife we started with. 62131CV. The leading 6 stands for bone, the next number denotes the number of blades, and 131 is the actual pattern number. If you have watched my previous case knife reviews, you may be confused by the suffix CV. So far, I have reviewed case knives with stainless steel blades only, and all stainless steel knives have the suffix SS. Now, what does CV stand for? CV is the abbreviation for chrome vanadium, which is a special formula of alloy cutlery steel. Basically, it's case cutlery's carbon steel as opposed to their true sharp surgical stainless steel. A lot of people prefer chrome vanadium over stainless steel because of its ease of resharpening and the better edge holding. But please note that chrome vanadium needs a little more maintenance. It will rust on you if you don't take care of it. So make sure to keep it oiled. A quick look at the model number reveals that the number of this canoe knife only differs in the suffix. Instead of CV, it ends with the letters SS. The model number doesn't tell us anything about the color though. So let's take a closer look at the different bone colors now. This one here is amber bone. You have already seen it on my large stockman. From a distance it looks like stag, but of course it's jigged bone. The handle scales of my stainless steel canoe are also jigged bone. Now look at this stunning crimson shade. The coloration ranges from a light raspberry red over ruby red to a very dark cherry red. Beautiful and amazing. If you have watched my other case knife reviews, you know how much I enjoy the navy blue color on my large Texas toothpick and the harvest orange on my humpback stockman. Together with this crimson red, these three colors are by far my favorite handle colors. Do I need to say anything about the fit and finish? No, I don't think so. As with all my other case knives, the fit and finish is absolutely awesome. There is nothing to complain about. This video started with an homage to the Native American heritage. At the end of this video, I would like to turn your attention to a novel that was among the most cherished books of my boyhood. James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans. Many years later, I found out that I had read a special youth edition of the book with a shortened and simplified text. Honestly, these youth editions are a crime against readers and against literature. I would like to read a passage from chapter 20, which contains the famous canoe chase across Lake George. After the massacre at Fort William Henry, Hawkeye convinces his companions to head north. As they travel across the lake in a light canoe, they are spotted and soon tailed by Huron canoes. A long, low island lay at a little distance before them, and as they closed with it, the chasing canoe was compelled to take a side opposite to that on which the pursuit passed. The scout and his companions did not neglect this advantage, but the instant they were hit from observation by the bushes, they redoubled efforts that before had seemed prodigious. The two canoes came round the last low point, like two coursers at the top of their speed, the fugitives taking the lead. This change had brought them nigher to each other, however, while it altered their relative positions. You showed knowledge in the shaping of a birch and bark ankers when you chose this from among the Huron canoes, 
said the scout, smiling, apparently more in satisfaction at their superiority in the race than from that prospect of final escape, which now began to open a little upon them. Thank you.